Our most recent cool shot is now finishing up over the south and east, and it's about to turn warm for pretty much everyone across the country with a storm about to hit the west coast. Could that translate eastward? In this video, I've got details on everything on the upcoming pattern, so you're in the know. Here we go. Thank you so much for joining me here in this video. If you enjoy the rest of it, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already to get me to that 3,000 subscriber goal. I give you those consistent outlooks using maps like these from Weatherbell. Free trial of these in the description. Let's take a look at the model overview over the next few days. As we go with this European model solution here through the next couple of hours and overnight into our Sunday morning, you can see some rainfall through parts of Florida. This is not going to impact Louisiana. We're not seeing this in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. No, this is literally only hitting pretty much the far southern corner of Georgia, but really just through Florida at this point, um, as we're going to be also seeing some rain and higher elevation snowfall impacting the west, some of that with gusty winds. Make sure to go to weather.gov for your latest alerts there in any region, but you can see as we go towards, say, Monday, um, February 19th at around 7 a.m. In the morning, you can see some more rain, high elevation snow in the west, and really that's going to be the story through midweek of this week in terms of the precipitation pattern. It's just going to be very active out west, pretty lackluster otherwise, maybe a few showers through parts of southern Illinois into early Tuesday morning. Those look to dissipate quickly, and you know, these models are pretty accurate over the next three to five days. So even as we head towards this late week system, towards around Friday in the early morning hours, you can see that rainfall that looks to make its way out of parts of the midwest, and then eventually head into eastern parts of the U.S. While the exact location of that storm can't be specified quite yet, we are looking at a likely rainy system here over parts of the east as temperatures will be above average um, as we head towards the end of this week. So we'll take a little bit more of a deep dive into that system a little bit later in the video, but let's take a look here at what we've got going on over the west overnight tonight and into our Sunday morning, kind of investigate the pattern over there. You can see in, in the parts of the higher elevations of California and Oregon, some heavier snowfall, also some heavier rain into parts of, you know, the northern and western two-thirds of California through all of Oregon, even southwestern Washington as well, getting in on some rainfall over the next several hours. Into our Sunday in the afternoon, we'll see some snow pushing inland into parts of Idaho on down into Wyoming as well as western Colorado. A new low pressure system appearing in the bottom left corner of your screen though, and that's going to be our next rainmaker for a lot of especially northwestern California. Also look at some of that heavier snowfall in the higher terrain, you know, once you get up there in the Sierra Nevada range, as well as in those higher elevations of South Central Oregon into our early Monday morning, we'll probably be getting some heavy rain, some gusty winds. Again, check weather.gov for those latest alerts at any given time. On down there closer to Los Angeles, we'll probably be getting some very heavy rain, especially through the mid-morning hours of our Monday, while the Sierra Nevada range, even on up there through parts of Southeast Oregon, gets in on some snow. Some more of that snow heads inland, so parts of Southern Idaho on into parts of even northern Utah as well in those higher terrain areas. That's where the snow will really pick on up late Monday and into our Tuesday. And you can see with this low just continuing to spin around off the coast into Tuesday morning, we just continue to see that southerly flow push in, which means that more rain and high elevation snow looks to be persisting in some bands, at least some localized bands through our Tuesday. You can see that continuing to swirl moisture around even into our Wednesday morning here over the west. So the overwhelming trend is going to be rain and high elevation snow all the way through Wednesday here and a pretty relentless train of moisture at that. Um, as you can see, even through parts of northern Nevada on over there into northeastern Utah, we'll continue to watch that snow through our Wednesday. I do think, though, as we head towards the end of our Wednesday and into our Thursday, you see that H centered over east central ne um, Nevada there. That's an indication of high pressure system taking hold, which likely means that we will begin to dry things out a little bit more as we head towards the end of this week, but not before a lot of rainfall. Let's look at that European model rainfall. This is one solution, but again, since this is just in the next few days, these totals are going to be pretty accurate. Up there in the parts of Northwest California along that coastline up there. That's where we're going to be watching some totals just through Sunday morning in the early morning hours, totaling on upwards of one, maybe two inches of rainfall there. We continue to add heavier downpours onto that though as we progress through time and by Monday morning, look at all the rain we've picked up all along that California coastline. So from Eureka down to San Francisco, all the way on down to Los Angeles, we'll be picking up, you know, at least two inches to three inches by that point. And a lot of that down in the southern part of California will have just been falling through our day Sunday and into our Monday there as that first system, obviously not quite as heavy, um, except, except in those northern areas. You can see, you know, just hour by hour all the way into our Tuesday morning. Look at how this rain just continues piling on up. By the time we get to that point, it looks like some spots even down through San Francisco 
piling on up close to four to six inches of rain. That's why we're really worried about flooding, especially on down into the localized areas that have been recently experiencing some around Los Angeles. But we'll also see some of those totals up into parts of western Oregon at least get close to some of that flash flood territory there, adding on up close to an inch or two. And again, this is total precipitation adding up system by system. And we'll also watch a little bit of precipitation head further inland, it looks like again, and some of that falling as high elevation snow. In fact, let's take a look at that snow just very briefly here out of the Euro model. You can see as we make our way through the rest of our Saturday evening and on over here into our Sunday, this is as we go through the middle of the night, Sunday night, and into our Monday. Most snowfall totaling up there over parts of the Sierra Nevada range where localized foot plus totals will have fallen by then. But you can see through the mountains there, through parts of southeast Oregon, into parts of southwest central parts of Idaho as well. Two to four inches of snow not out of the question there in some locations and you can see this continues on adding up again as these systems continue progressing into the west. Um, parts of the Sierra Nevada range upwards of two to three feet by the time we make our way to our Tuesday around say 2 3 p.m. and also watching parts of Nevada, Utah, southern Idaho and far western Wyoming and Colorado fill in with some you know few inch or more totals there. Um, especially in high elevations. Now, another thing I want to look at here is those ensemble temperature anomalies. And again, right now, it's cooler than average by about 5 to 15 degrees over a lot of the south central United States. We are seeing, though, some ridging developing back on over here over parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, where we're 5 to 10 degrees above average into our Sunday afternoon. So that's kind of a little bit of a mixed pattern there. But you can quickly see how warmer than average temperatures are looking to take hold by the time we make our way towards Thursday around the middle of the day. So from parts of western Texas all the way up there into Minnesota and Wisconsin, about 10, 15, even 20 degrees above normal for this time of the year in that zone. And most of the rest of the country at least near normal or just a little bit below normal, if anything, there. And you can see that really persists here as we go towards our Thursday morning. Some spots there, places like Amarillo, Texas, um, you know, say 20, 25 degrees above average as we head into our Thursday early morning. So morning low temperatures are going to be pushing kind of those record warm levels there in some cases here as we make our way through the end of this week. You notice a little push of some cooler air there into the eastern United States as we head towards our Friday. That's behind a little system that will, again, that's that one we'll talk about here in just a moment. Um, but again, not really expecting a huge snow out of that necessarily. Um, but you can see right behind that system, regardless of what it produces, looking like as we head into the start of next week, which is Monday, February 26th, so we're looking 8 to 10 days out. These ensembles, you know, collecting and saying that it's already looking like it's going to be well above average there over a lot of the north central and really just central and eastern United States as we head into that time frame, while it looks to be cooler than average, especially there through parts of California and Oregon and into Nevada, as probably some new systems will be impacting those areas. So what does this look like on the Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day temperature or probability outlook here? In those deep red shades and into those purple shades, that's where we're really looking at above average temperatures taking hold. So if you live anywhere from parts of north central Texas through Oklahoma into Kansas, northwest Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota, and then on up there through Nebraska and the Dakotas into those purple shades as well. That's where these odds are extremely high for above average temperatures, and really all that means is that you're looking at well above average temperatures here. So when the probabilities are higher, the chances of high, much warmer than average temperatures are also increased, and you can see the only cooler than average areas in that 6 to 10 day range down there, really through parts of Florida. Now we're looking at surface pressure here. High pressure systems are going to be indicated by deep reds, but what we're looking for is a low pressure system moving out of parts of the southern high plains here as we head towards midweek of, on Wednesday. And it's going to begin to probably produce some precipitation over the Midwest and into the eastern United States as we go Thursday and eventually here into our Friday morning with the exact track of that low. A little bit questionable. So let's play this out. You can see by the time we go towards, say, around Thursday, 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, likely a low pressure system being agreed on by these ensembles. So this is a collection of a bunch of models saying probably exiting the Midwest and moving into parts of the Ohio Valley while also strengthening a bit will be a weak low pressure system. And you can see it does turn into a you know more moderate to even strong low pressure system that's below a thousand millibars here as we head towards our Friday afternoon. What that's telling me is that as we go late Thursday and into our Friday, we're going to see a lot of rainfall along the East Coast, especially. It doesn't look like this storm's going to be too severe in any regard, but we will have to watch the southern end for some showers and storms and the northern end for maybe a little bit of snowfall. So let's time that system out here with future radar from our European model. Again, you can get another solution out of the GFS. This is just one model that I prefer through parts of Missouri, 
Illinois, southern Indiana, and southern Ohio. On down there in the parts of Tennessee as well, it looks like we'll get some moderate showers and some heavier rainfall, some downpours at times, maybe some embedded thunder here getting going late Thursday afternoon. Through the evening, Thursday, and overnight and into our Friday morning, this is what we looked at in that overview a little earlier. And then beyond that, towards, say, around midday on Friday, you can see some steady rainfall and some shower and storm coverage here over a lot of the east from parts of Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, all the way on up there to parts of southern New England, looking like it's going to be a pretty wet day here on our Friday, February 23rd. Notice now, it's the western two-thirds of the country that are drier than average, as opposed to the eastern two-thirds, like we see at the start of the week. Here we go, though, extending things through time. Doesn't look like that system will last long. And if anything, the only snow that we see out of that for now looks to be with the lake effect snow bands impacting parts of the Great Lakes region there. And then we quickly rebound and warm back up over a lot of the country here as we head towards the middle of the weekend. So overall, not a huge um, big concern with our weather pattern up ahead, but I'll keep you posted there in the West and elsewhere. Um, by the way, if you want to check out Mr. Storm's channel here, I'm um, really cool weather forecaster. Um, his name's Vincent here, and he has a really nice channel, so if you want to check him out, I'm um, looking at his videos right now. If you like longer, you know, more in-depth weather videos, as well as some also some reports from his hometown there in New York, you can get those videos right here. I'll put a link in the description, in fact, in a pinned comment as well, so you can check those out. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, or just at least leave a like on his videos, if nothing else. Um, by the way, subscribe to this channel as well for more weather updates like what I just gave you. That's it for this video, though. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next time, everyone.